First, uh, I would say that before going to the point, let me explain the nature and also the limits of my intervention on the subject. As you've been told uh, a few minutes ago, I'm a member of the French Senate. I was elected in 2011 in the Département des Hauts-de-Seine, part of the urban uh, uh, Paris area. Hauts-de-Seine is located on the outskirts of uh, Paris to the west of the city. It is home for 1.6 million inhabitants to be compared with the 2.2 million of the inner Paris, the city of Paris. With Paris, Haute-Seine is the richest department of France thanks to the wealth created by the first European business district called La Défense. I think you perhaps know it because when you are on the Champs Elysees, you can see the skyline behind, behind Lac de Triomphe. That's uh, the main, uh, um, I say, business center for Europe. Um, I'm also vice chair of the Senate Finance Committee and a member of the college group in the assembly. Among other attributions, I report on the Arctic topics at the Senate. A in this capacity, I have been able to witness the dramatic impact of climate change in polar areas and the consequences on the rest of the planet. As an economist, I know how difficult it is trying to articulate the traditional economic thinking based on short-term profits and the duty to preserve our natural environment for the coming generation. So, concerning London and Paris, these are the two biggest urban areas in, in Europe in terms of population, of size of their territory, and of course in terms of their share in the GNP. They are located on more or less on the same latitude and share the same climate, except maybe for the rain, it's more rainy here, but we in Paris pay cash for this advantage through systematic now uh, pollution peaks when we enjoy all too much sun or not enough wind. And you know, we, uh, this is a real great problem. We have just heard the findings of the excellent report presented by Jenny Jones. I'm personally convinced that the impact of climate change on Paris economy is more or less the same than here in London, even we don't have a very recent study uh, showing that in France. Recently, the French Senate, however, had just come up with an inquiry led by my colleague, also an ecologist colleague, Leila Aichi, on the cost of the air pollution for the French economy. This is, of course, a slightly different topic, but climate change and air pollution are closely linked together. The study only took account the direct cost of <coughs> air pollution on health, urban structure, agriculture, and loss of workforce due to a certain type of disease. It estimates that the global minimum cost for French economy is more than 100 billion euros a year. 100 billion euros a year. If we apply the same data only to the large Paris area, the annual cost would be around 30 billion euros a year. So, we can therefore agree that the impact of, uh, impact of climate change and pollution on our respective economies is roughly the same. Let us then discuss how we currently manage this question <coughs> and how we can learn from each other's experience. <coughs> Comparing Paris area and London area, I would say we are at a disadvantage in terms of our organization. Our handicap, and I think perhaps it's our main handicap, is that we are 50 years late on London when it comes to coordinating and organizing our metropolis. We do not enjoy yet the equivalent of your greater London. Our capital region is very fragmented and there is a strong competition between all the level of territories inside the area, and they are numerous. We have municipalities, communities of municipalities, <coughs> departments, and regions. The region, region Ile-de-France is very diverse, 
and with more than 10 million inhabitants, it covers a territory much more larger than the urban area of Paris. Its powers are limited, very limited, mainly regional transportation, part of the infrastructure investment. And its global, moreover, its global budget is half the budget of the city of Paris, which has only two million inhabitants, and less than one third the budget of the greater London. In France, and that's a problem, municipalities and departments are very powerful, and it exists inside a large uh, urban areas uh, as Paris, very important inequalities between various uh, municipalities or places. In a nutshell, the wealth, the more dynamic activities and business offices are concentrated in the inner Paris and the western part of the region. On the other, and on the other end, poverty, working people, housing are concentrated in the northern and eastern part of the region. So we pay a heavy price for this situation. In fact, daily commuting between east and west, north and south, south is incredibly high and generate traffic saturation, loss of time, air pollution, air problem among children and also elderly persons, and also high greenhouse gas emission. The different organization make it difficult to compare Paris and London area, but it also make our political action on climate issue complex to engage, engage and to coordinate in the Parisian uh, area. The good news is that after long and long and difficult debate, we have just passed last July a new law establishing the Greater Paris Metropolis. Ooh. For <laughs> it's something new for you. For you. It exists for uh, till uh, 1965. We just create this kind of coordination, and this, uh, it would be very useful because one of the main objective we've uh, given next year at the launch of this uh, Great uh, Paris Metropolis is um, a plan to build a strong, ambitious, and coordinated plan called Plan Climat Air Energy inside uh, the area. I don't have to translate. <laughs> a plan for climate, air, and energy. So you could say that we borrow a page from the London book, uh, only be it all, uh, all be hit uh, 50 years late. So, uh, I'm a bit long, but uh, I, I would give you some example of what we have, have uh, constructed, because I say we have a disadvantage, but we have some good experience. Perhaps we can uh, exchange an experiment we've yet launched. We, this advantage is perhaps, is perhaps a political advantage, because the Région Île-de-France, since 1998, and also the city of Paris, since 2001 have been led by a left coalition, including the Green Party. <laughs> I'm part of the Green Party, so I'm very, I think it's uh, something very positive. This has led to some interesting initiative regarding environment and climate action. Of course, not, of, not all of uh, uh, our political partners are converted to ecology, but ecologists and environmental association have a higher influence in Paris than at the national level. And so we've done some studies, and thanks to meteorological data, we know that minimal temperature in Paris area have increased by 1.5, uh, 1.4 degrees during the 21st, the 20th century. We can give precise prediction on such a small area, but forecasts show that the temperature will be much higher in 2,100 and with more frequent long heat wave and more rain in winter. And so we had a dramatic experience of heat wave in France in August two, uh, 2003, where around 15,000 people died, especially elderly <laughs> persons in Paris. And that experience had a strong impact on the opinion. Experts predict that uh, part of the city could be affected by what we call a urban heat island. A very strong difference in temperature 
inside the city compared with rural area nearby, and this difference could be around 10 degrees, and it could have some very important dramatic uh, uh, effect. So in 2007, <laughs> the city of Paris decided to launch its Plan Climat Energy, the first one, with the goal to reduce its uh, GGE, its uh, greenhouse gas emission, by 75 person, percent in 2050. It involves strong action on mobility and transportation, on housing and urbanism, on waste management, and I will be uh, very interesting in a few minutes to hear about the work that uh, Veolia is doing here in London about this question. The raising awareness on climate warming had led us more recently to uh, reach more constrained and more short-term objective, uh, and from 20, uh, 2002 to 2020, we decided to reduce the GEE by 25% to reduce the energy consumption in Paris by 25% too, and using at least 25 of energy coming from renewable. So we've done many experiences. I could speak a lot about that because this is concrete and it is in use for uh, at least 15 years. Um, we've launched a very ambitious Plan Vélo, uh, a plan for bicycle inside the city, and uh, we project uh, 800 uh, kilometers of protected, protected solo, uh, cycle lines inside Paris, and I can say that today uh, more than 700 of these uh, uh, bicycle lines have been built. And I'm glad to see that uh, the mayor of London mm -hmm. has adopted recently a similar scheme. In the space of 10 years, bike use has doubled in the region. Today, the armor, uh, it amounts for 5% of the mobility inside Paris. Our objective for 2020, so uh, in less than five years, is to reach 20% of the circulation inside Paris through bicycle. We believe that we are on target because only last year bicycle use has increased by 15%, only in one year. We also uh, launched um, uh, a more intensive use of uh, public uh, transport and especially tube and, uh, and uh, buses. And uh, till the fr from the 1st of se September this year, users inside Paris or from the most remote part of the region pay the same fare. This was a green proposal in 2010, and I'm glad that it had been achieved very recently at the beginning of the month. In 15 years, car traffic inside Paris, without having uh, some kind of, um, you call, uh, sorry? Congestion charge. Yes, <laughs> tell it. We've uh, succeeded in reducing the car traffic uh, by more than 25% inside Paris because we created this uh, uh, bicycle line. We, we have a system, a very dense system of uh, uh, metropolitan, but also we create new lines of uh, tramway and so on. We believe this reform can have a positive impact on business. The successful launch by uh, our organization Agence Climat Paris of our website platform called Paris Green. <laughs> this is not in French, but I think uh, <laughs> you, you can <laughs> understand it. Dedicated to local, national, and international investors goes to prove that there is a strong interest from company when we link energetic, ecologic transition with new technology, with innovation, and with a strong political commitment. A study on the impact of green policy in the greater Paris area on the workforce had concluded that we could create 164,000 more jobs in the region uh, in, uh, till uh, 2020. So to, to conclude, let me ask, as some uh, of you may wonder, why all these efforts at a local level when we know a global uh, climate action is what we need. After all, 
even if London and Paris may be two big cities, but uh, but they, uh, they, they are the two big cities, but they only represent some 20 million inhabitants in the planet, which host more than 7 billion persons. Why should, we, uh, why should we do more than the average population, more than the national pledges drawn by our government in the run-up uh, run of COP21? Is it a drop in the ocean? I believe it is not. First, because COP21 is not only about a series of national pledges. The commitment made by currently today 70, uh, 70, uh, 57 uh, states are not enough to reach the goal of a limitation to 2 degrees, the increase of temperature by the end of the century. This is not the ecologists who say that. This is Laurent Fabius, our French foreign minister, uh, minister who recently said, OK, we have 57 countries who agree, we, we, we have national pledges, but it's not enough. The analysis done by various NGOs shows that if nothing is done, the increase of temperature before COP21 uh, is on a current trend that will be around 2.9 degrees. 2.9 degrees is unbearable. It would be no, no more the same civilization in, in which we will live. So far, the global impact of the current commitments taken by 57 states would be a reduction of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 degree. So a long way to the from the objective of 2 degrees, a limitation to two degrees. That's why the augmented mm -hmm. objective taken by large city and those other territories are so crucial today. Thank you for your attention.